Hey guys, happy Easter, Passover, and I'm not sure if there are any other holidays going on this weekend, but happy holidays, I suppose. In this video, which I think should maybe be the last one or next to last one um, about my Peace Corps experiences and everything related to them, um, I just want to talk about what does it feel like when you finally go back to your site? And for everyone who's done their two years of service or how many months or years of service, you know, there's no, there's no promise. There's no obligation to ever go back to your site, to ever even go back to your country of service. I know plenty of returned volunteers who, who never have gone back and don't intend to ever go back. And I know other volunteers who have gone back every year. Um, it really depends on a lot of different circumstances and everyone has their own feelings about it. And I just want to talk about my own, of course. I mean, that's the whole point of all, all these videos, right? They're all my experiences and my feelings. Everyone is different. So for me, I have gone back to Guinea twice since ending my service. And the reason is because my day job, I work for a global nonprofit. And uh, just by coincidence, by luck and um, I don't know, maybe fate, I suppose, I was given Guinea as a platform. So I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Guinea from 2011 to 2013. And then for um, pretty much the last nine months or so, I have been the administrative officer for my organization working on just administrative details for Guinea, for our programs in Guinea. That's given me the chance to go back twice. Uh, both times, I was just really excited, you know. Um, for years, I didn't know if I'd ever go back um, from 2013 all the way to 2017. I was like, well, you know, I would need to have this amount of money, this amount of vacation time, um, this sort of plan, like, what would I even do? Um, but when I got my job and it's like, oh, you actually have to go to Guinea and you have to do work. And I was like, wow, it's, it's a cool opportunity. You know, you get to go back to where you were a Peace Corps volunteer in a different capacity. You know, first of all, you're no longer a volunteer who's making $3 a day, who has to, you know, wait eight hours for, for a taxi. You're someone with a, a job and you actually feel like you have a little bit more confidence in yourself, authority. To, to do the things that that people, that you always wanted to do as a volunteer that you could never do. And I thought it was also cool that, that you know, I would be there and I'd be like, hey, I'm talking to my friends, like, I haven't seen you in years. Can you come to Conakry, the capital? Um, can you come visit for a day or so and we'll hang out? Those are all the thoughts, you know, when you're, you're still in that I mean, mindset that you can be an idealist. Um, the truth is, you know, I was super busy. I was there for two weeks in July and then another two weeks in January. And my days were 15 hour days, basically, where I'd wake up um, typically still around the time for call to prayer. Uh, not because I was it was the the imam calling me to prayer that woke me up. Uh, my hotel was actually next to a train near the port. And so throughout the night and early morning, you would just hear this train <laughs> honking, basically, or tooting its horn. And it woke me up a lot. Um, so I'd just get up anyways, go to the gym at my hotel, and then I'd go to work for my organization. And I would be there from morning until after everyone was leaving and I needed to leave, get a car back to the, the hotel. And then, and then I'd go back and do more work for my organization at my hotel. So the idea that, that when your organization, if you're working and they send you back to your country of service, that you have all this free time, you're thinking like, uh, it's probably not going to happen. You're, you're going to have very limited time and you have to be able to communicate that with the people you want to see. Like, hey, I'm only going to have maybe a few hours here and there. Um, can you get by? And then you have to also not be... I don't know. So you have to remember the circumstances. You know, I made friends in villages and in smaller cities, and people don't have the resources, you know, to to leave to just go visit 
um, even if you're, even if you know your friends did it while you were in service, like they were just like, oh, I got to go to this wedding. I got to go to this funeral. It's Tuesday. I'll miss school. Um, you know, the resources just aren't there for everyone to come visit you for three or four hours for a single day. You know, it has to be a full trip. So what I did, and again, I'm not telling anyone else to do this. I'm not making a recommendation or anything. It's just what I did because I wanted to see people I hadn't seen in years. Um, I basically offered to pay their transport and also like if I asked them if they had any family, I'll pay them for transport, um, give them money for food because that's a pretty big ordeal. Like I was asking people to, to travel for like seven hours from uh, Mamu, you know, having to go to the taxi station, wait for the taxi, come and then come find me all the way downtown in Conakry, which is already a huge distance. Conakry is on a peninsula, so it's a... It's like you know, 15, 20 miles um, of a city, basically, lengthwise. That's what it feels like. And so I was, you know, reimbursing people for for the few hours of time that I was asking. And I think that's fair. I mean, t to me, it wasn't a lot of money. Um, you know, the a taxi ride from Mamu to Conakry is like $10, $15, I think. Um, and... So it wasn't a big deal to me. And it's just, again, I just wanted to see people who I don't know if I would ever see again. Um, when I saw my friends, though, it's it's nice. Ada, you, you're different people. Uh, you're no longer a Peace Corps volunteer. And maybe they're no longer your former student or um, a neighbor or anything. It's just like they're you're seeing them differently a little bit. It's like, you know, you're, they're people that you want to see, not people that you have to see. So when you live in a village in Peace Corps, um, you have to see people, right? You have to see your neighbor. You have to say hello. You have to see like the people you work with. And when you go back as, you know, an individual doing whatever vacation work, you can choose who you want to see. And I think that makes it a little bit more special because it's like, you know, like I, you realize like you enjoyed that person's company or you enjoy that person's friendship and um, you just enjoyed it so much you still want to spend a little bit more time with them. The The sad part, and this is kind of related to the, the video where you can't save everyone, is that, you know, you, you realize that you're on very different tracks. You know, Guinea still has very high unemployment very low opportunities. I mean, things are getting better, but it would take a long time to fix those issues. And you find that the, the phone numbers you try, they don't work anymore. Uh, phone numbers change pretty easily. And you try to reach out to people and you find out they've, they've left the country. They've tried to take the land route to uh, Morocco and then go by sea to Spain and no one's heard from them in years. And it's assumed like they never made it. And that's happened for me for a few people where it's like, hey, what happened to the so-and-so? What happened to this person? It's like, well, he, he, they'll say something like he tried to find his destiny in, uh, in the French, um, tried to find his way and, and there's no more. Um, and they just keep hoping the parents and the relatives that keep hoping to hear from them, but they never do. And um, it's part of that thing where like you realize like when you're a Peace Corps volunteer, like you always had that way out. You always got to go home to America, um, a land with so many opportunities and and people just wanted that for themselves. They wanted it so bad that they were willing to take so many risks to leave their country. Some of them made it and I, I know people that made it to Germany, to France, and they found um, some way to stay in those countries. Um, I'm not sure of the legality. I think it's a complicated issue but others they simply don't they didn't make it um and you'll realize that when you try to reconnect with people and then you start thinking well how can i help the people that are still here and um again that's that's a tricky question i don't have any recommendations for you you know what i i, I think what i said in the other video is that when you can't save everyone you can't just keep giving so much of yourself to everyone else because then you lose yourself and you lose track of what what you can do to make yourself a better person so you can actually make an impact in people's lives you know giving a few dollars here and there um it's going to help them for a day a month 
uh, but at the end of the day, and at the end of the time, it's still it's still a difficult situation for so many people. Um, not to say, I mean, I did give money to some of my friends just to, again, to reimburse them. But also, I think I had, I had two students, former students, need help with their school supplies to go to finish out high school, go to college, give them a little bit here and there. It was not too much of my money at that time. And um, it's just something that I wanted to do, again, not recommending something and it's not something that I was willing to do for a lot of people um, so yeah it's it's great to go back it's great to see the people you want to see uh, you can go to like the touristic spots too and not have to worry about you know biking home you can rent a car uh, for a hundred dollars which is a lot you can rent a car for a hundred dollars and go to La Casca de la Sumba. You can go all the way to Mamu Dalaba in a weekend. Uh, the Dalaba Hotel has a beautiful scene. You can do all that. You can go to the islands. You can take some of your friends. You can um, just check in with people. And it it kind of if you're working for a nonprofit like I am, it might actually you know like reinvigorate you a little bit. You are at the site where you're now currently doing projects like I do global health projects and you're seeing like you know the side effects of your own products and um, it's like wow like this is what we're doing this is how we're helping people you know, and this is how I help people I spend you know 8 to 12 hours a day in an office trying to make sure that these multi-million dollar projects can help so many people and that's where I should be spending my time um, that's where I could be spending my energy trying to improve my skills set there so that I can help make a bigger impact for a much larger group of people. Um, so in end, it's, it's nice. It's nice to go back. It's sad because you realize like, to, it seems like nothing's changed for a lot of times, like uh, especially on the short time scale. It's, for me, it's been seven years since, you know, I first went to uh, Guinea. And I feel like, you know, there's there's been a lot of changes in Conakry, much more modernization, more gas stations. Um, seems like more people are doing more professional work, electricity. Um, but then you see the civil unrest, the teachers going on strike for a month. And you're like, well, you know, what are we doing? And it, that has to remind you, like, you know, development isn't uh, day one, day two, day three done pro project. It's it takes years, it takes decades. Um, you're not always moving forward. Sometimes you're moving back, and that's just how it goes. I know there was my um, Peace Corps boss in Guinea. She was a volunteer in the Congo, and they were evacuated, and. For her, like she had this idea, like she was always going to go back and help them, help the people that have been her host family or her friends. And it took her decades to go back to her site. And when he finally went back, when she finally went there, um, no one was there. Uh, the city was, or the village was gone. It had been raised in some sort of civil conflict. And she could never find anyone that she had been with. But seeing that you know that had really inspired her to do a lot more work to where she's been in development work for so long now and that's part of the thing it's like you you might not be able to help the people that you wanted to help the most but you can always help someone a little bit and you might be able to help a lot of people a little bit too and i think that's important if that's the type of work you want to be doing. So for me, I've gone to Guinea twice. Um, been super sick twice. Still don't know what caused it. Trying to narrow down if it's something in my hotel, something at a restaurant near my work, um, something I don't know in the water. Don't know. Been trying to like work through it, but I have high doubts that I'll ever go back to Guinea. Um, again, with my organization, my platform portfolio is changing. 
Um, someone else is taking over a large part of my projects in Guinea. Um, and really, I, I don't have uh, a huge reason to. Like, I, like, I, you know, there's some people I want to see and communicate with and maybe eventually help. Um, but I don't need to see, like, the touristic sites. I don't need to spend it's that you know that opportunity costs what could i be doing more with my time that's doing you know the things that i want to do to grow as a person um, there's so many other places i want to go to and projects that i want to work on and that's the the reality of it you have to realize like you know it's a what what do you want to do and what do you need to do to get there um, I just don't see it in the cards for me for Guinea much more. Uh, not to say that I'm not going to support projects that are going on there. You know, I've seen other Peace Corps volunteers I was with. They had like a, some science day trip. Um, they went back to Guinea, did some uh, project there. I know uh, Dare to Innovate that was founded by Peace Corps Guinea. I love supporting those projects. Uh, my organization is actually considering giving them some things as we uh, close out some projects there. Um, and you know, do I, do I feel guilty about saying that? Like, you know, like I'm never going to go back. I told my friends, like, I, I, you know, it's like, I don't know if we'll ever see each other again. And so this might be a much more final goodbye. Um, it's sad, but the, when you say goodbye to someone, it's all, it could always be a final goodbye. I suppose in America, people just don't want to believe that, but you know, <laughs> everyone here has said goodbye and you haven't seen those people since you've said goodbye years ago at college or something like that. You know, people move on and you have to eventually move on as well. Um, so yeah, those are just uh, some of my thoughts about going back to Guinea. <laughs> Great place, terrible place, place of happy memories, place of sad memories. Um, if you're a Peace Corps volunteer that wants to go there, you will certainly have experiences that will be your own. You'll make friendships and connections that will be so unique. You'll have stories like, a hey, what about the Oopsie Poopsie Club? Or um, did your students riot on you and throw rocks at the classroom and then somehow come the next day perfectly fine and happy? <laughs> Which did happen. <laughs> I actually had two students get into a fist fight in class, sent them home. And then the next day they're like best friends. Uh, you know, it's gonna happen when you have hormonal students and you just have to like keep rolling with it. Um, yeah, Guinea's always gonna have a special special place in my heart, I suppose. Uh, you know, I spent two years there. How can you, how can you not feel something for a place and a job and village that you invested so much into and where people could have been people were kind to you and, you know, um, just wanted you to do well and you wanted to do well and you wanted everyone to do well. And it's that collaboration, that effort and the idealism. It's nice, but it's a memory now, but it's a memory I'm going to use to, you know, keep moving forward and keep inspiring myself to do, uh, good work. All right. Happy Easter guys. Happy Passover, if you say that, um, if it's true, I'm not sure, and uh, have a great Sunday. Bye.